Okay, so here's the uh, schematic, and uh, let's get a little familiar with it. This is a fairly basic, fairly basic, straightforward radio. So there's the heaters, all in series, which is why the radio wouldn't work in the first place. This one here had an open in it. There's the pilot light. Let's see a couple of resistors here in the filter system. There's the high voltage takeoff to go through the output transformer back to the plate of the output tube. There's some feedback. Pretty sure what that. That's a little bit of feedback will control distortion and just in the output circuit here. There's the antenna. I can make a connection to an external antenna. There's a 0.01 capacitor there uh, for safety purposes. So you don't get uh, so if you get a shock it's a small tingle shock it's not a big whopper. The loop antenna. There's the tuning capacitor and the trimmer. I'm not sure what that is right there. Oh, I think that's a connection to the external shield on the tube. It's a metal tube. So that's what that is, and that's just basically taken to ground through this capacitor or through this 270K resistor here. That'll be to the chassis. So this is the ground bus that runs through the radio. All these connections to it. This line here, uh, looks like that's the screen supply to the tubes. Okay, a little, I'm not sure what all that's about. IF transformers. has an RF amp at the front, followed by the mixer oscillator section here. This radio should work really well, because it has this tube out front. Really cheap uh, radios, one, two, three, four, five, six tubes, and cheap five tube radios, the antenna connects right into the mixer tube. Okay, what else is going on here? Yes. This looks like the tone control here. There's the volume control. Makes this the detector. Hard to see two little plates there in this tube. So it's a double function tube. So it does the detecting. And the audio comes out here. No, that doesn't make sense. The audio comes out here over this volume control, and then a portion of it is selected. Fed to the grid of this, of the audio portion of this tube. That's where the tone control is. Uh, I'm going to knock out some highs, some high frequencies. The output carries on. So, why would this radio be not working well? Um, suspicious of this tube, actually suspicious of all of them, maybe not so much this tube, but uh, suspicious about this one, this one, and this one. This one will be the one 
that's producing most of the gain and this one will be boosting the well I guess I could say selectivity that's maybe not really true um, but this will knock away a lot of the noise if you know a lot of radios in my shop are just overcome with noise uh, having this tube out front will prevent a fair bit of general shop or general house noise spurious signals and that from making it into here once it gets to here the noise uh, then you get all kinds of weird stuff going on as you can tell whenever I tune a radio in my shop I just pick up junk all the way across the band usually from a weak front end so I think we're going to do some more tube testing I really need to test these tubes these three for sure and see if any one of them is really really weak yeah I think that's the next step I'm going to leave it, leave the uh, capacitor at work for a bit and we'll, we'll test three more tubes here. I think we'll start with this guy, 12SK7. Okay, so here's the 12SK7 right here. The tube tester rules that I didn't follow the last time is never leave the voltage up on high. I did a 35 Z5, this was left on 35. Oh, that's an easy way to burn up a tube by accident. So I try to remember to always set this down to 6.3 when I'm done. So 12.6 for this tube though. J, let me just check these. JR is 12 SK7. Yep. 4765, 4765, 3, 22, 72. She's good to go. Okay. Now, this one should read a uh, mutual uh, conductance of 1200 minimum. So 3000 volt scale, 1200 is about here. You just ignore the words when you're in the actual reading mode, measurement mode. Okay, we'll check out our shorts. No shorts. P4. Right on the, uh, put on English now. So I, now I have it set so these words do mean something. It's in the replace zone. Tube tester is a little hard on tubes. It tends to read a little low. Ah. Well, this case sat on it. Hmm. Make a little note of that. I'm not sure if that's really bad enough. I think you want a good tube at the front of this. SK7, we'll call it weak. That's probably okay. Now the next tube to test is a 12, 12 BA6 in a metal can format. Hey, that's kind of, I don't think I've ever seen that before. This one here. Wait a minute. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Grab the wrong schematic. <laughs> 12BA6 in a metal can. I've never heard of that. Okay, next one. 12SA7. Let's look at the right schematic. That would help. I try and keep only one tube out at a time normally. 12SA7. 
Okay. Let me set up my tube tester here for well, maybe it's right here. Twelve. It is right here. Okay, so we'll just leave my cameras running here. So twelve SA seven. 12.6 JR 53467. 53467. 12SA7 Use this setting for short check only. Okay, let's double check again. JR 53467. JR 53467. For short check only. Okay, well, I guess we'll do that. No shorts. Okay, so the actual test setting is five four zero oh, six seven. So we just switch this to a four. Five, four, oh. Oh. There's a couple. Wait a minute. Blah, blah, blah. Five. Let's do this right. Five, four, oh. Six, seven, five, four. Oh. Okay. This guy should read eight, almost 1900, almost 2000. We should be reading up in this zone here. If he's good. No shorts. Very good. Okay, so that's, that's good. Up we come. Maybe that front end tube is really the cause of the bad performance here. Now we gotta get get the next tube out. Wacko. 12 SK7. Oh, didn't I look close enough? Ah, there's two 12 SK7s. I should have done them one after another. Okay, 12 SK7. It's going to be JR4765. 4765. 4765 with a 3. 22. And the English 72. Six four seven six five three four seven six five three. Now that's almost my phone number when I was a kid. Okay, give me a moment. We're good there. This one. 12, 1260, almost 1300 should be in this zone here. It's a little, a little low, about the same as the other one. Two SK7s reading the same, but a little low. That kind of suggests the tester might be a little off. They certainly work. They certainly aren't dead. They certainly aren't really, really bad. So maybe I'm going to revise my theory. My new theory is something else is wrong. That's my new theory. Uh, alignment, not very likely.
does have quite a few paper capacitors. But like I said, they're in really good looking shape here. Maybe I can give a couple of these a test uh, in the circuit. Just to check and see if, if any of them are leaky. So I'd look for a capacitor that's out in the open, so to speak. One terminal is just going to a, a plate or, or a grid or something like that. And you know, I'm not going to find one like that. I'd just like to give one a test that I know is not uh, paralleled with any of the other components or. offhand I can't say I see anything like that so we're gonna have to I have to think a little bit about this before I start chopping out parts maybe I should go back I'll get rid of the hum yeah why don't I do that because I know that has to be done I'll take care of the hum and we'll, we'll see how the radio is working from there M maybe that'll improve it a bit maybe the maybe the B plus was low in here <laughs> 